All right, guys, here's the exploded view of the White Wolf kit. But we're going to be building this entire rocket today using only Hobby Shop 5-Minute Epoxy and a little bit of Loctite Threadlock. Take your T-nut, you put it in like that, and you're going to want to set it down on something flat and give it a good whack with a mallet. Now we have a spot to thread our mirror clip into. Get a washer on one side. Put it through like there. Do you want to put some thread locker on there so that this doesn't unthread because this is going to be inside the rocket once it's built so if your uh if your thread your nut somehow comes unthread you're going to lose the anchor for your shock cord which is a very bad thing get a wrench on it give it a good turn our bottom ring is going to be flush that way we have adequate reach from our machine screw provided to uh, retain a motor. We're going to mark 12 inches up our motor tube and that will be where our middle ring goes so we have clearance for our through the wall fin assembly. Always put the epoxy a little bit lower than you want the ring to wind up. That way some will stay underneath it and that's what you want obviously is the bonding surface itself to have epoxy but it also pushes the excess epoxy up and makes a fillet of sorts. As always, you wanna make sure it's nice and flat. We've pushed it maybe about an eighth of an inch past that, uh, that mark I made. You can see all the excess stuff there. I like to just take the stick and run a little bit of a fillet around it doesn't need to be pretty no one's going to see it now the bottom one's a little bit tricky you got to be careful not to get epoxy inside the tube obviously you don't want that because that's where your motor's going to go if you do get a little bit in there it's not a big deal just make sure to clean it up before it dries otherwise you'll be stuck sanding it so that you can fit a motor in there again make sure that the side that doesn't have the t-nut backing is facing out and just so all this extra epoxy doesn't go to waste, we're gonna make ourselves a nice little fillet around the bottom ring. A little bit of masking tape around the bottom of the ring, just like so. Now, instinct would tell you to do that with this ring as well. I'm not going to do that, and here's why. It doesn't have the eye bolt weighing one side down that's gonna tend to try and drag it down, but if on the off chance there's any bit of epoxy in there and we end up putting the tape on it, that tape is going to be epoxy to the motor tube right where the fins meet the motor tube. Put a mark on the outside of the tube up towards the top centering ring where it's going to be so I have a reference for when I'm reaching in there to put epoxy in. Take your shot cord, keep that rubber band. Feed it through like that. Take the other end of the shot cord, feed it through like that. Pull it nice and tight and there you go. And here's why we keep the rubber band. Throw the rubber band around it and stuff it inside the motor tube. All right, now we're ready to glue it in. First place we're gonna go is that upper spot that I have marked up here. I know you can't see what's going on, but you just wanna get a good coat of epoxy. These other two are super easy because you can just peek through the thin slot. And then finally, the last one's gonna go right here, right on the edge, which you can see see what I'm doing. I'm just applying a generous amount. Make sure you're consistent all the way around. Keeping in mind that we're not going to let that T-nut in the back block one of these fin slots. There he goes. Another couple baps. And then Push it on up. Tina is not blocking one of the fin slots. Now to ensure the fin is nice and straight, I like to keep stuff from moving by taping it down. I'm gonna take two popsicle sticks or uh, for a kit this big, rulers would be preferred. Just like some regular uh, wooden rulers. Get the sticks uh, pretty much as close to lined up perfectly with each other as we can get and then we're going to clamp them to the fin on the root of our upper fin all right now make sure the 
fin seated all the way in. And then this clamp. And take whatever you'll be using to make your fillets. In my case, it's this big tongue depressor. Use a Sharpie or pen or marker of your choice, really. Apply a good amount of pressure. And there you go. Now you got a mark where to put your tape at. And if this is your first high power build and you're gonna use hobby epoxy, which is fine for fillets, I just highly recommend you go to 30 minute because doing this with five minute, if you don't know what you're doing and you've never done it before, can be a very stressful situation and can also end with some pretty uh, unsatisfactory results. Butter case goes in, you take your screw, you take your mirror clip, Tighten it, and there you go. Motor's not coming out, that's all you do. During the last set of fillets, which I did not film, um, I had enough excess epoxy left over to just go ahead and glue this bulkhead in. Same procedure as with the centering ring. Two washers, two nuts, a bit of thread locker, tighten as best you can. Recess the bulkhead about a quarter of an inch or so into the coupler. That way you have enough room to add a fillet on the front side because this is the side that's going to be getting tugged on. It's not pretty, but it's pretty functional. If you don't ever plan on having the option to expand it for electronics, you can glue the coupler in and glue the nose cone in place. However, I tend to just leave stuff friction fit or put nose, put pins in them just to keep it together so that if I ever change my mind, I can replace this coupler with an electronics bay and then use the tube and nose cone provided with the original kit and I have to buy a new one since I glued it in. All right, remember that shock cord we tucked into the motor tube earlier? It's been out of your way the whole time, right? That's why we do that. Now though, we're gonna set it free. We're gonna take the quick link provided with the kit. Put our shock cord on there. Get our parachute. And then put those on like so. You definitely wanna put the parachute up very high just like that on this kit especially because you don't want this shock cord getting tangled between the two sets of fins. After your paint's thoroughly dried, just carefully cut out all your decals and meticulously apply them. Just take your time and make sure you get everything lined up and properly spread out and make sure when you're pulling the transfer tape off to always pull at a 45 degree angle. For the rear centering ring, you're going to want to use the wood screw that's included with one of the rail buttons and drill straight into that back centering ring. And then for the upper one, make sure you've got it lined up as best you can and mark about 5 inches down from the top of the tube. Once you're confident that the rail button is lined up with the bottom one, drill your hole. For the upper one, we'll be using the machine screw with the jam nut on the back. Put it through and put the jam nut on the back. Reach into the tube with your wrench and tighten the screw as tight as you can get it. Take a piece of packaging tape and put it over so the shot cord doesn't hang up on the screw. 